In this example, we're going to be solving quadratics by factorising. There's three parts, A, B and C. And in part A, we've got 4x minus 9 multiplied by 5 minus 3x equals 0. A couple of things to notice here. First of all, one side of the quadratic is 0. That's something we always want to try and obtain. Second of all, this quadratic is already factorised. This makes life much easier. But a common mistake people make when it's in this form is they try to expand it out. They don't realise that it's already quite helpful to have it in this form. If we've got two things multiplied together to make zero, then the only way that can happen is if either the first bracket equals zero or the second bracket equals zero. That means we can say that either 4x minus 9 equals zero or 5 minus 3x equals zero. Let's solve both of these equations. Adding 9 to both sides gives us 4x equals 9, and then dividing through by 4 gives us x equals 9 quarters. For the second equation, adding 3x to both sides gives us 5 equals 3x, and then dividing by 3 gives us x equals 5 thirds. It's worth pointing out that you don't actually have to do two lines of working out to get to your answer here. If you're comfortable going straight from this question to writing down the answer, then that's perfectly acceptable. And you should, after a while, be aiming to get to that level. OK, here's a similar problem for you to try for yourself. Pause the video and then come back and check your solution against mine. Welcome back. Here's my solution. In a few seconds, I'm going to move on to part B. But first of all, I'm just going to go through how I obtained it. So once again, we have two brackets multiplied together, which equals zero. If the first bracket equals zero, we get one minus six X equals zero. Adding six to both sides gives us one equals six X and dividing through by six gives us X equals a sixth. Or if the second bracket equals zero, we get eight X minus five equals zero. We could add five to both sides to get eight X equals five and then divide through by eight to get x equals 5 eighths. OK, let's take a look at part b. In part b, we have 5w equals 2w squared. A common mistake that people make when they try and solve this equation is they see w in both terms and they try to cancel. They divide both sides by w. Doing that is going to lose you one of the solutions because you'll actually be dividing by 0. So a top tip when you're solving quadratics is don't cancel or divide by something unless you know that that thing is not equal to zero. The way I'm going to solve this is by first of all making the left hand side zero by subtracting 5w. So I get zero equals 2w squared minus 5w. Now I have a common factor of w in both terms, so I'm going to factorize using single brackets. w will come on the outside, leaving me with 2w minus 5 on the inside. And that tells me that either w equals 0, which I get from this term, or 2w minus 5 equals 0, which I get from this bracket. Adding 5 to both sides and dividing by 2 would give me w equals 5 over 2. OK, here's another problem for you to have a go at. Pause the video and then check your solution against mine. Welcome back, here's my solution then. If you got it right, this question has a part C, we're going to move on to that in a minute. But I'll just quickly go through my solution to this one. We have 7w minus 4w squared equals 0. This time, the right hand side already equals 0, and both terms can take w, so we can factorise a w outside of the brackets. That leaves us with 7 minus 4w inside the brackets. Therefore, we get either w equals 0 or 7 minus 4w equals 0. Adding 4 to both sides gives us 7 equals 4w. And then dividing through by 4 gives us w equals 7 over 4. Let's move on to part C. OK, in part C, we need to solve 15t squared plus 25t equals 40. First of all, I'm going to subtract 40 from both sides to make the right hand side 0.
Each term has a common factor of 5, so I'm going to divide both sides by 5. That gives me 3t squared plus 5t minus 8. From here you can factorise using whichever method you want. I'm going to use the cancelling method, which means I want two numbers that multiply together to make a times c, which is negative 24. And I want two numbers that add together to make b, which is 5. The numbers I want are 8 and negative 3. So I'm going to have a pair of brackets with 3t inside them. And then the two numbers I've found here, positive 8 and negative 3, go inside the brackets. However, the 3t minus 3 bracket has a common factor of 3, which we'll divide by. That gives us t minus 1. Now that we've factorised, either the first bracket or the second bracket must equal 0. Using the first bracket, we get 3t plus 8 equals 0. Subtracting 8 from both sides gives us 3t equals negative 8. And then dividing by 3 gives us t equals negative 8 thirds. Or, using the second bracket, we get t minus 1 equals 0, which gives us t equals 1. OK, here's a problem for you to try for yourself. Pause the video and then come back and check your solution against mine. Welcome back, here's my solution then. If you got it right, that's the end of this example. Otherwise, I'm going to go through my solution now. First of all, I'm going to rearrange to get all three terms on the left hand side. So we get 4t squared minus 38t plus 9t equals 0. We have a common factor of 2 in each term, so let's divide by 2 to give us 2t squared minus 19t plus 45 equals 0. Factorise this however you like. I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to make a times c, which is 90, and two numbers that add together to make b, which is negative 19. I want minus 10 and minus 9. Putting those in some brackets, I'll start with 2t in both brackets, but one will cancel. I've got minus 10 and minus 9. The first bracket has a common factor of 5, so let's divide. That gives me t minus 5. That means either the first bracket equals 0, which means t minus 5 equals 0, and t equals 5. Or the second bracket equals 0, so 2t minus 9 equals 0. Adding 9 gives 2t equals 9, and then dividing by 2 gives t equals 9 over 2. 